Elijah, the ginger Jesus. <laughs> what do you have to share? I don't know to share. Do you want to throw me a... Throw me a question. I can get it flowing. What is this riverbed to you? Well, the Karamea, the Valley of the Three Winds, Karameers. Oh, this was definitely... This one the, thing, speak up just a little bit. Oh, okay. This was the place where I found really who I was, and it really sent me off down the path of spiritual awakening, which was a truly bizarre thing in my mind, because this is a desert, and as you can see, I'm a ginger, and deserts and gingers don't tend to coincide. But it's really been the pivotal for me of learning how to live without money, especially last year, because if the, if the cherry season isn't good, then you don't have any money. Mm -hmm. So it really teaches you to learn, or it teaches you to truly find yourself and, and get on your path, because when you have no money, if you're not on your path, then it's a truly miserable feeling. But if you feel deep down that this is your path, and you, you let that flow out, then it really brings you to the most magical of places. Like uh, through Karamea, last year was my first year here. And through that, I sent me down a six, seven month journey of no money, which transcended through winter and sent me down an incredible <laughs> spiritual path of really releasing all the things in my life that were preventing me from being who I always knew I was. But I would always get in my own way, like we all do, because mm -hmm. our ego loves to do that. The, the, the true path of that acceptance is accepting our ego, and through that, giving it the love and the, the true love that it actually needs. Because that's always really craving in, in this life is the, the pure love that flows through the eternal soul. The only problem is the ego doesn't never or never wants to actually attain this happiness. Uh, it's, it's an ingrained part of us where when we see where our happiness is going and we don't want to put in the steps that we know are necessary to go there because we look at it and think about it and it turns into this great big ordeal and we're like, oh, I'd rather just sit here and smoke a bong in my context mm. which then brings you down this whole other path when you end up being really destroying yourself because you're not on the path you know you're meant to be on which bring me bring you back to Karameos this coincides for a lot of people in that concept we all, we all come here and it's a place where you can create what you need to go to festival season for a lot of people or start the summer or a lot of people just come here to have a good time which it's hard not to have a good time here, which is a beautiful contrast because it's in terms of society and what Cop Karameos has, it really has nothing. You don't have any good values, like any good supermarkets, you don't have any good stores really. You have amazing fruit stands, but you have to walk and actually go and put in the effort to get your good food. It's not a convenient place. But at the same time, with that lack of convenience, you find the true convenience of being down on this riverbed. And for, for example, all the artwork around us and turning wood and anything into a piece of art, which you really learn when you're living without computers for, for a lot of us. And I mind myself being a hardcore gamer for many years, it was hard to actually step outside of the, out of sight of the room. But that is the ultimate, it's the ultimate game is living this life. We get to experience it however we truly wish to experience it mm. in the places like Karameos to me in the Valley of Three Winds, all these places coincide with us and we acknowledge the power and the lessons these places are trying to teach us. It really sends us off down our path and we've, we've truly come to understand that our path actually isn't hard, it's just, it's fun. And it's what we're truly craving the entire time. The, the hardest step is to just put yourself out there and and go and start that first, those first few steps, which are definitely the hardest when you're, when you're in a hole. And when I came to Kiramiris last year, I, I was in a, a very dark place in terms of my whole life. I was, I was in chronic pain from snowboarding and destroying my body. And Kiramiris and running out of money really put it into perspective of learning that, well, to put it in perspective of my, my healer soul and that I can heal myself instead of telling myself that I can't do these things. Kiramiris was really a stepper for that whole transi transition in, into myself. I'm truly grateful and feel blessed to have experienced Karameos in such a positive way. And there's places all over BC, but Karameos is definitely a unique 
beautifully contrasted valley of old retired people that have put all this work into the system and now they're retired and they walk around frustrated at all these newcomers coming into their town which they deem as kind of a menace when in reality if they just talk to us they, and actually share our stories and they come to find that we're really good people and they are really good people as well. Everybody is an amazing person. You just need to give yourself that time to put yourself out there and allow other people to bring their part of the equation into it instead of constantly trying to stomp on top of it and always get your word over people, which you see a lot in social scenarios where people aren't listening, they're just talking. And quite often you have three people or more just talking at, at each other and they, they might be listening to like one word and there's a general description of the of the conversation but everybody is off on their own path and on their own tangent not really listening to anybody not really listening to themselves and that kind of went off tangent of Karameos but it's all related and it's all earth and it's all the valley of the three winds and it's all weather flowing which is another beautiful contrast of Karameos is the three winds collide here and you have a completely unique ecosystem where we have rattlesnakes in Canada and you have this beautiful river flowing with fresh trout in it and then on the mountains there's absolutely nothing, or well, there's not absolutely nothing, it's arid. But then you come down to the valley floor and it's full of orchards and one of the, well, it's the organic fruit capital of BC. Mm -hmm. Beautiful contrast all throughout this place. It's truly a remarkable place. And in turn leads us to truly remarkable people and truly remarkable adventures. Which is a lot of based around the fruit, which is another beautiful part of it because it really brings life back to the things that matter and the things that really matter are food. And when you ha when you're working in food and you're picking your own food and you see that you can make twenty to thirty dollars an hour picking cherries. It really puts the whole world into his perspective of why would I ever subject myself to something as as soul demeaning as a minimum wage job where I just feel like shit and I, I don't want to go to work every morning but I do it because society tells me that's what I need to do. They don't even put it out there that young, young people can go and pick fruit. Mm -hmm. It's not even a socially spread thing they don't they don't want it instead they hire mexicans and try and get it done as cheap as possible mm -hmm. especially if you look in the states it's all done like that mm -hmm. but yeah it's still a beautiful existence i love it you can work here minimum a job and push through it and you just know that there is something out there for everybody it doesn't have to revolve around it doesn't revolve around money when you, when you let go of that attachment to money that's when the universe brings you into your path and you, everything you need within your path will just manifest itself around you. Even the things that you could never even expect to come in your, to your, out into your reality. But the things that you subliminally knew were always waiting to appear. For example, this magical staff that just appears out of the, out of the universe. <laughs> and various other tokens of affection from people which really helps you bring bring everybody that you meet along with you on your journey instead of it being a self-attached thing where I go and buy clothes that are brand marketed and I know they're being made in shitty places instead you can you can live without all these silly little amenities that we put ourselves through because we like the concept of Burton for example <laughs> instead of but we know what they're doing but, and, but we're still like, oh sweet, look at what they're doing for snowboarding, but look at what they're doing in terms of the, well, they're, they're going and making all this stuff in China, persecuting a whole, a whole race of people, all in the name of making cheap snowboards. But you can go and get custom made snowboards that are made in countries, and then you are supporting local artists, you're supporting local woodwork, you're supporting local, and you're supporting a healthy economy, mm -hmm. people doing what they're truly desired to do instead of supporting the big conglomerate. <coughs> yeah, that was the, like the Karameos run. <laughs> that was gold. <laughs>